Welcome to the Fitness Queens podcast, empowering your mind and sculpting your body. Join your hosts, multiple fitness world champions, Alicia Kirios and Stephanie McHugh, as we explore all things female health, training, competing, mindset, and living the fitness life every day. Hey, everybody. We are so excited to be back. It's been quite the little hiatus. We've had a lot. Oh, oh my gosh. It's been too long. Too long. Too long. But if you haven't already noticed the big news that I know both of us were sort of alluding to when we were coming into the recording, our brand new intro, our brand new fun little caricatures and our rebrand on Instagram and our relevant social platforms, we have changed the feel, the vibe, and the flavor of our podcast, moving in a brand new direction like um, both of us are on a personal level at the moment, uh, which I think is going to be super exciting for, you know, all of you going to entail some really cool stuff coming up. What about the new animated icons there? Oh my gosh, those little flexing queens. I mean, are we... Fitness Queens, um, that is our new handle, that is our new rebrand. Uh, welcome to our podcast where we're going to be talking everything about sculpting your body and empowering your mind um, at the same time, making sure that you're living your best self and always bettering yourself. I think the best thing about uh, what Ali and I always bring to the table is the fact that we, you know, we have just such, such a good relationship and a lot of si insights and in-depth um, knowledge about just all female health and wellness, you know, what it takes to be not just a competitor, but also a coach and also a wife, a partner, a mother, you know, also just a sister, even just a friend, someone that can, you know, listen to you and just be there uh, to, you know, have, have some, you know, relatability as well, because we definitely understand so many of you gals. And for any of our guys that are listening, uh, welcome yeah. as well. I think it's always so fun to have um, some of our um, male guys tune in, whether if you're a male um, coach that, you know, maybe base is more female uh, clients. Um, you're learning a lot about the intel that we bring as well in our experiences. So welcome everyone. And um, like Ali said, it's been a little bit, so uh, yeah. we've had some time away. I just want to quickly say, actually, you know, a massive thank you to our audience base, because we we're actually just discussing this off air in the last 24 hours or so, um, that we still have such amazing support and downloads and, you know, audiences, engaging into our previous episodes despite the fact that we haven't actually launched anything new for a little while while we've been working on all this new rebranding in the background so you know thank you so much we really do completely completely cherish all of you and without all of you we wouldn't have you know a purpose for even getting on and having these discussions that we love having so much so okay. you know a massive thank you and um and we really hope you love the new direction the fun vibes and, you know, a bit of a the, the change that we have coming. We will have amazing new guests that we will be bringing on. There will be lots of cool announcements coming up and there will be, you know, just lots of sharing our new directions. And firstly, let me start by saying, guys, I'm so sorry in the background, you're going to hear a bit of bang, bang, Bob the Builder moments. I've got a renovation going on in our property and there is absolutely nothing I can do about our recording time because we're on two different time zones. So, you know, I apologize in advance. In Australia, you guys, we always make it work. And that's actually kind of been the reason why we've been away. Um, Ali has been traveling. I've been traveling nonstop. It has just been such a crazy, crazy uh, life in the background for both of us. Uh, she's pregnant, so let's just leave it at that. I think uh, that kind of says everything. I mean, she's pretty far along. And myself, we've just been doing so many uh, different things, trying to, like Ali said, rebrand even just our podcast. We've also been rebranding our business. Um, so we've had just a lot of other stuff and so many things that people have been asking. Of course, a lot of personal questions, a lot of other things. What's next? What's going on? What's, you know, really happening? And guys, there's not a lot much that I can disclose um, on today's call. But for those of you that do follow or, you know, know me very closely, um, do know, you know, what's going on just a little bit. But we will be able to give you guys some insights as far as kind of what's going on behind the scenes, because we do want to update you guys. We just can't really say 
everything just today. <laughs> um, but Allie, just please give us a little bit of an update. What's been going on with you? How have you been? Um, what, what have you been up to? We have a delivery day, all organized, locked and loaded. Our little princess will be joining us at 3.30 p.m. on January 3rd, 2024. Woo! So I am literally like, I'm, I'm just over 12 weeks out, literally. So I always talk like it's a it's a prepped stage. I'm so many weeks <laughs> out. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm moving into this phase of the process where I'm, you know, training has been adjusted. Um, you know, my focus point lifts, my calories, my macronutrients, you know, adjust slightly. So at this point in time, I've literally just stepped out of the back end of all of my relevant checkups. So having my biomechanics tested, having my, um, you know, pu- uh, my, my pelvic stability, my pelvic floor and my abdominal separation tested. I have had my, you know, movement patterns in some of the big lifts tested just to see whether or not we had to modify anything because you can get pubic symphysis and some lightning that comes at this point in time, which is quite painful. Um, but I haven't had anything. So the really cool thing is okay. I'm putting in some stuff in my training for, for my third trimester, which is literally like happening to me in the next week or so, um, that I didn't actually continue to do last time. So it's really quite cool. And we also had my last checkup with the obstetrician this week and found out that she's sitting breech. So where George was head down, locked, loaded, prime position, ready to come out and face the world from like 22 weeks, he didn't move. This little minx is head right up inside my esophagus. I feel like I'm swallowing on her some days. She's so high. And I have this like little flat bit down the bottom. So before I I keep showing in my updates on Instagram, the slide across to see the difference at the same time between George and her, because it's really quite cool to see that, I, I was popping out really low with him and quite out, but nothing in the top part. And with this one, I'm popping out at the top. And so not quite as deep out, but she's got this little flat bit down the bottom because she's just, she's just chilling way up high. So look, I don't know if this is going to give us any indication of the personality differences. It may do. She might be a lot more chill and a lot more like stubborn. <laughs> Then he yeah, is. never know. She might be like know. super chill at the beginning and then just get wild as she grows oh, up. <laughs> right. And he was saying, Hey, look, I'll take a little bit of chill because we took George to his very first gymnastics class this last week. And there, you know, if there was some really big um highlighting moments for us about the things that look like we kind of know about him in the home environment, but when you get them in this social setting with lots of other kids around their same age or just a little bit younger. It was really interesting watching him in person comparative to these other kids. And it gave us like this really big confirmation, which we already suspected, but this was like a wow moment of this kid's got no chill, like fucking none. <laughs> like he is <laughs> on the go into everything. Go, 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 go. Miles an hour, 24 <laughs> seven. And uh, it's, yes. it's, it's beautiful and I am, you know, harnessing it and I'm letting him be every inch of who and what he is. We will never try to change him. But it's just super, super interesting to watch the difference between him and other kids, right? It's like, wow, these other kids. like not want naps. He's oh, just like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> he probably just goes balls to the wall until he just balls. like can't know to the wall lady until he actually hits the brick wall and passes out of sleep right like there is no off button he's like normal for children but i mean who am i i have no children so i cannot <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's a lot of fun but you definitely have moments where you're like whoa i'm so exhausted in this pregnancy because you're running around after that it's like a cyclone and it makes me giggle because that's what they used to tell me I was like as a kid. And hard to believe though, right? Like, I mean, where were they getting that from? And Christos is like that now. He's like, oh, a- yeah, I was going to say, can, can we take a moment? Christos is like nonstop. This guy, I wake, if I wake up and he's awake, that, there, there's something wrong. <laughs> I'm in a different time zone. And I realize most of the time Christos is online. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> 
I is still literally awake that at 2 a.m., 4 a.m. You know, it doesn't matter what a.m. it is. I'm like, he's up. He is just go, go, go. And, but I know in his personality or yeah. anybody that knows this does too. I mean, he's just such a business mind and just always and trying to take care of things. never switches off. Full driven. You know? Yeah. Which is it's actually quality. 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 I admire a lot of people that have that. Um, yeah. I have so one of my really really good friends um it is he's just the same same way and I just feel yeah. like that's just one of his best qualities this is like he just doesn't know how to turn off his brain <laughs> and stop yeah. going um I actually like don't get me wrong like I will go 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 but I know I, I know how to prioritize my sleep we've talked about this multiple times on the podcast <laughs> like sleep is a priority and I will not tolerate any kind of drama or any type of you know just things that are going to put my sleep out of control. And given I have sometimes times of the year that I clearly can't control uh, how much sleep I'm getting. And it's like four to six. And I then appreciate my sleep even further because I know that how do people live like this? Like they literally are living like this for, you know, months on end, years on end. And I'm just here dealing it with it like a week or two. And I'm like, I'm miserable. <laughs> like this is horrible. <laughs> So no, I, I will definitely shut myself off and, um, and which is actually kind of why you've seen me disappear guys. Um, I, I, I turn into a little bit of a hermit. I really go into more of a, you know, just get away from everything that's causing the stress. We become a internal reflector. So if we're looking oh, at our core, correct, like the, the processing component for you and the way you process through situations is actually to remove yourself and then go internal and you literally work. That's what sets mine. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's the best way to put it, Ali, like the layers, because each like layer I was kind of working through, it was taking me time. And I, I was very unclear with what move I wanted to do or what I was going to, you know, do next. And um, there's just so much chitter chatter. And I think this is for anyone that's listening to this and you may have any type of drama in your life. Um, you need to just remove yourself sometimes and just actually have more clear thoughts. I feel like the, the more silent and more, you know, quiet it is, the better I can hear my own thoughts and the clearer I can think and the better I can actually make decisions because I'm not moving with emotion and I'm not making these decisions from emotion. I'm actually doing them with a, a, a head, like a leveled head. And I'm not <laughs> just trying to just decide my next thing because of my, my anger or my sadness or my frustration. And all of that was really coming um, to make me very, very, um, I don't know how to put it. I honestly haven't been in this situation on ever in my life to where I had a I was at a crossroad where I had to make a really, really big uh, decision for my integrity, my morals and what I stand for and kind of overall what I want to represent and what truly is like valuable to me, which is the people I love. And if the people I love are being affected and are starting to, you know, uh, hurt, it hurts me. And if I can be a voice and I can actually, you know, make a change, then I, I just felt like that that was weighing very heavy on my heart. And it was just something that I um, obviously, as everybody knows, you know, I I'm, um, obviously have stepped away uh, from the WBFF completely. I um, am no longer uh, with the brand at all. And which kind of leads into this whole rebrand, right, guys? Like, this is why <laughs> we've completely dissociated within, within the brand. And like, I'm not here to talk any bad, no negativity. Like, I'm not here for that. I have my reasons. I have um, my personal pains that I had to go through that I had to work with. And um, I, I'm still working through, but it, it, it's a very clear decision of where I had to make. And I, I stand by it. And I, I do want to thank and appreciate so many people because I don't want to get emotional here. I don't. <laughs> I already went through all of that crap. Um, I just want to thank everyone for just being there and the just support that I was shown. And um, gosh, the utter respect that I, I felt from so many individuals. And that I think was my biggest takeaway is that the community that we have and the clients, the love, the friendships, all of that is just so much more important than any title, any type of uh, just power or just yeah. any of the, the people just get so involved in, in it. Yeah. They get caught up and they get so blinded by and 
Oh God, guys, like this is actually another segue and reason why we want to talk about, you know, how so many bad things can happen to a good thing like there's so much good that comes you know bad comes out of the good because there was good there like and that's the thing it's like Alec I'm sure you relate like we were there for a reason like my my mission has always been different is to to better myself to improve my life to continue having goals and to strive and to continue knowing that I have something to work for and that that was a platform that I definitely felt was there for that and um, along the way things got skewed and things got lost and it wasn't the way whenever I first started and um, I just kept my faith right that things were just going to change or things were going to get better and yeah. uh, it only got worse so there there's just I don't know that. about you but for me it always felt like um COVID was the turning hmm. point like mm. there oh, was, yeah there was a turning probably, point there that's for yeah, sure there was probably um cracks a little prior to that but um COVID for me was just like wow this is a very different animal this is a different vibe a different everything you know so um for me that's what I felt so I don't know if that was like what you would have you know agreed I think it was a turning point yeah I agree that I think was there like was a turning point there for a lot of the companies that I mean but a- across the globe right like so many companies were affected but that still has actually you're right though Ali because that's kind of when um, we could just call it greed, right? Like you could just say greed because that's a good term. Uh, in I, think, general. I think just the whole blueprint and focus for um, how to perhaps survive and channel through that really just became very muddied water. And and it, we just saw a complete change in culture and a complete change in vibe um, and just uh, behaviors, <laughs> oh, behaviors are coming oh, up. Let, let's talk about real quick. I mean, toxic environments. I mean, the yeah. thing is, whenever we're already in a in a, in a place where there could be toxicity because it's just inevitable. There's going to be people, they're competitive. Like they're just trying to be, you know, like extra and, you know, bring that animosity. But that was really wasn't the case. The reason why I truly actually stayed and loved my first experience was because it was, it was like a family experience. It was so much fun. I felt like the friendships that I've made along the way, and this still stands like, I mean it, like anybody that I've met or I've ever um, seen in person or met you in person, I, I really appreciate and value that. Like, like I take that away with um, all my heart. And I think that um, because of the friendships, I stayed very long and I just loved the events because of the people I was around. And that was really my my biggest win every weekend. It wasn't ever the champions that might have won on my team or that were just winning or anything. It was nothing of that. It was really the people that I, I got to make friends with and I got to experience moments with and uh, cherish them. Like you, Ali, I'm like, I met you backstage. I'll never forget, you know, us meeting back. We wouldn't have this podcast if Ali and I wouldn't have connected and hit it off and um you know have such Very a good friend rice cups with jam oh. and Reese's pieces in LA you know that's where it all started LA 2017 that's where it all started and you know what like can I say like Ali like there, it came from a, a competitive standpoint too like even though you came from Australia we had Korea we had you know US we had you know Canada we had UK we had Brazil, we had, you know, South Africa, we had so many countries competing, you know, and there was just this bigger, beautiful. you know, size. it was just beautiful, beautiful. absolutely yeah. good beautiful. commodity. There was, it didn't feel toxic. I mean, even though we're all competing against each other, um, it yeah. just didn't, like that. even if, even though I understand there has been a lot of voiced up, you know, maybe angry pros that from the past are like, oh, this has been happening for a long time. I'm like, but maybe that just was, the way the perspective was also seen right like it's just also how you take away a show we've talked about this multiple times on our podcast it's like what are you here for like what are you doing competitions you know uh for in the end of the day it's like for yourself it's not nothing else and yes we've always known about you know it being expensive absolutely that was something that was part of the difference like that was duh that was clear so we we're definitely never complaining about that you know but it was just more on how it became different along the way and how it got lost with its mission and overall how it got you know kind of butchered like now, you know, I, I think I think also core thing is how certain 
situations arose where people were behaving in a way that was, you know, um, not in line with a family value. And and I think that's probably the key thing for me where I started to be like, oh, wow, okay, this is not at all like we remember it or how it, you know, was. So, you know, I think that's probably core of it. And this is tapping into those something you mentioned before, which is where people lose sight of why they're doing it and it becomes just about chasing a title, getting this crown like just it's a you know like the status the the clout they're going for the clout right rather than it being um I'm gonna work hard and develop myself and year in year out bring this beautiful change to who and what I am physically and as a person and in time I will be rewarded for my efforts if they are good enough by a win which is how it should be um and how it used to be and I'm like (laughs) I feel Look like from before, before COVID, you're a hundred percent right. If we even talk and about it, hard and it and didn't, didn't discredit it. It. not discrediting other, it. other, other champions. I'm not. And, and honest, actually you could take it however you want. I don't care. It's not that it just really comes down to, is it a really physique competition, modeling competition? What is that criteria? And it got lost so much along the way because of what manipulation, right? because of being able to have power, all the things that if you don't have, you can't win. That makes no freaking sense. It is wrong. It is not just unfair. It becomes something that the people that have the power because they can manipulate you. And that is where the line has to be drawn in as far as anyone in life, no matter who your circle is, this could apply for so many things, like people that try to use you, try to manipulate you and try to just blindside you and do things behind your back in a way that you are essentially not, they're being lied to. Let's just put it that way. They're just blatantly lying to your face and not being real. And then their true colors come out. Colors come out and you cannot, I mean, dirty laundry can't be, you know, in the closet for too long. You know, you have to really be true to what your actual heart and mission is for your company. And I feel like there is a lot of the manipulation that got just, God, got up to the top and it just sucks because I watched it happen. I saw it coming and it was one of the things that once you see that bad apple you know, it, it it rots the whole batch, man. It really totally ends up, you know, making everything so much more poisonous. That one, you know, toxic thing can end up, you know, unraveling. And I feel like this, this big snowball effect ended up happening. And all of this was a blow up point at this last event. I think so. And it's unfortunate. I think also what you start to see is people emulate what they believe is the mechanism for success, right? So if they're looking at a scenario and thinking, you know, their perception of the scenario is these factors are what got someone there and then I better go do the same thing. So then what you start to see is you see this ripple effect and you get this like level of um, tainted culture that comes as people look at the precedent and the precedent has been set at these are the things that need to happen, right? And then it just starts escalating and snowballing into, you know, something so much bigger and so much away from the actual blueprint and foundation for what you need to do to be a winner on that stage on the day. It's just that's kind of the way that I view it and have taken it is that it just became this massive snowball of um oh, absolutely. You know, it, yes absolutely. like the, the beginnings of bad behavior that then just gets mm-hmm. extrapolated out and rolled with right um and it's you know I'm it, it's what you yeah. allow it's 100%. what you allow to happen if you cut things you know if you actually make a change before the things unravel and they snowball effect right there's so many things that you know of course you can't change things now I mean obviously and I I wish everybody the best I'm not here to wish upon anyone's downfall you can't change what's happened at all can't change what's happened it's like yeah it's it's like it's been there you can't remove it you you've had so many people be affected by it and now it's you know what comes out of the back end of it 
is what comes. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, uh, yeah, like, and this is where the conversation today, we wanted to talk about how, you know, something really beautiful and really amazing can be so easily destroyed and damaged and damaged beyond um, easy repair. You know, it will it takes so long to build back um, trust and, um, you know, perception from a big public point of view once that's been lost. And one of the main things that, you know, contributes to that loss over time is where there is a lack of transparency and where there is a lack of, you know, systems and where there is, um, like I said, just bad behaviour from a select few apples that then create this level of um, souring and bitterness for people that are in their experience circle. Um, and then that just snowballs because you get the people that emulate that thinking that that's what success is, you know? So we see this though. Oh, like this, teach though this Ali, is, right? Like it's not even, it's not even just what they're trying to emulate. It's what they're trying to force. It's so what they're correct. trying to make a standard. It's not even a, Oh, follow my footsteps. Ali, that's what you and I do. We, okay. A, a good coach does not tell you, you know, what to see. They just tell you where to look. Yeah. There's a very big difference. You know, like if if you actually get told what you need to do in order to do well, that is horrendous. Like that is so political. That is literally the, <laughs> what is determination of what is going to be, I'm going to get to the top no matter what it takes, right? Like that is kind of like that attitude. And let me tell you, I've been told that by so many people, even leading into, you know, the last few years, like, don't worry, I'm going to get what I want because I know so-and-so it's like, who, what, like this is, this should never be of who, you know, who your no. designer is, no. who your coach is, who you did. It should be ultimately what happened on that day, okay. how, that you day. Showed it, how you looked the day of, not the day before, not a week before, not a month after, or whatever you had to do to achieve, uh, to get to the stage. Yeah. Like it, it does not make it fit, not just fair guys. Like this is literally just a standard that should be pretty much a hundred percent, like a, a no brainer number one, and should be a standard across the board for everyone. Like it should yeah. just be something yeah. that we can really, really stand by. I think um, what I, I, I guess my frustration Ali along the way, besides, you know, of course the blow up point, which we'll get, you know, to, but it's, it's really, like you said, the, the lack of inconsistency and in yeah. how things are, are, are just maybe managed. I mean, we, we both run businesses. Like this is, this is just the organizational skills from the communication, right? From all the things that, I mean, support and all of that, that we, we give and we, we, we prioritize so much for even our team, you know, and we do that day in, day out. We understand the value of being there, of, you know, of course, communicating, of taking, you know, feedback, good criticism, like constructive. But also even having, um, having, a floor that invites feedback you know that's that's probably a major point to put across here is that feedback is only really given where a space feels you know like it's conducive to give it do you know what I mean so if you're historically not known for ever accepting it and it's a don't even bring it to me because I don't want to know about it then it's not really going to be passed along do you know what do you know what I'm saying like I think that was probably one of the biggest things um, for a lot of people is the fact that there was no opportunity to voice. There is no, and, and historically has been no real platform for that. Um, and nor did you feel safe in doing so, because if you did, you know, God forbid you were. Oh, you're shunned. You're punished. Yeah. Or maybe... so, yeah, go, go ahead. This is the sort of stuff that, you know, long-term can, bring things undone, right? And this is the stuff we were talking about when we are looking at it, you know, it's not just in this sport. You know, we see this in all sports and we see situations where you have the most profound, prolific, biggest sporting teams and biggest sporting situations globally that have different elements of this that will pop up from time to time, right, and can create massive scandals. This isn't 
something where this is, you know, special in any circumstance, you know, it's just that it's gotten to the point that it's gotten to and become an actual thing, right? Um, and I think that, you know, the key to it is understanding that there should be rules and regulations in place and then those things must be adhered to and they must be, you know, known to the broader audience group, athletes that participate, sponsors and spectators that go and watch and are involved in it. Everyone should know exactly what the playing field is and there shouldn't be anything about how I'm conducting myself and who I'm positioning myself with leading up to something. Like that's irrelevant. Outside of the match itself, the show day itself, the competition itself, the event itself, it's irrelevant. It should not affect performance and it shouldn't dictate, you know, judging allocation. That I feel that it's just, Mm -hmm. of course, needing to be um, very addressed and very just, of course, consistent um, is just that criteria of judging, like you said. Let's look at at the reasons why people do these things, you know, like, um, you know, for the individual, it's, I want I want the status, I want the title, I want to win at all costs. I'm, you know, which is totally against, let me just break that back for a second, the value stream of what things were. Um, it's, you know, it wasn't dog eat dog, chew your way to the top, but became that way. Um, and I think also it becomes about financial gain and the ones that are profiting off of that process too. So that's another situation. Um, and I'm referencing, you know, these things in a broad context across many sports when I think about where these things have actually taken place. And it is literally usually for everything from status and recognition through to, you know, personal and financial gain through to um, a power play and where you might be seen to sit in the hierarchy of things, right? Um, And these are the sorts of things that can be completely deterred and also prevented if there are literally non-bias-based, you know, systems and infrastructure around the, the sporting event itself, regardless of whatever that context, you know, context is. Um, because it's to me just I don't know a form of hate to say it but cheating you know oh, it is you don't even have to it'd be hating to say it it's reality I think a lot of people get so butthurt with the truth like it's it is what it is like the truth hurts and that's actually kind of what was stinging the most to me it's like this shit has actually been blowing up in my face and I've had this feeling and this gut-wrenching big explosing thing that has just been boiling and that's kind of why I've been calling it a boiling point because yeah but we've happened. been discussing a lot of these things you and I for a while oh, it's just on end like I mean again if we have people that are willing to help the brand and are wanting to grow the brand and do their best to you know facilitate um the best experience experience for everybody not just your team it's just we want everybody to have a good time not just your team because it's not about that it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it's like for everybody that goes to the show I want you all to have what I had my first show I didn't have a team I didn't have a coach I didn't know shit I didn't know anything going into the shows I've said that multiple times also on the you podcast you just had a lot of fun I was the you same just need to know that you're going in there to yeah. accomplish your goal to say you did it that you you know did the damn thing on the stage and you know have some memories from it and know that you had a freaking blast and that to me or maybe meet some idols maybe meet the you know your role models all these people that you might have been looking up to I think that to me is what was getting so sidelined like that that was the last thing to worry about when in reality was about money and about like you said who you know and what you do and what I um, what I actually probably find the biggest challenge or struggle whether you're an athlete or a coach, though, is um, when the lines aren't clearly defined and paved in, you know, sort of concrete structure, um, it's really difficult to build something adequately and that is going to meet the requirements because the requirements might shift, right? So it's really hard to give feedback as a coach. It's really hard to coach. It's really hard then as an athlete. It's really hard to know what is actually definitively your area for development and what really 
it's the just, hardest part for a coach. Yeah, it, and it, it, so it's many really coaches difficult. listening to this Very are agreeing difficult. and nodding their head, like, yes, like that's actually the hardest part about coaching for a show is knowing that maybe the criteria is inconsistent or that I don't know what that gray area is and yeah. how do you invest yeah. so much effort, so much time, so much money, you know, in something it's your emotions. You're putting everything on the line when you do these shows, which is why you should just have a fun. There's nothing yeah, else. Actually, but, actually, you know, knowing, I, yes. actually, and look, one of my biggest mantras, and I talk about this all the time is that there's no such thing as failure because every single, you know, when you're working in a personal development sport and literally all sport, as far as I'm concerned, is personal development focus because you're building resilience, you're building character, you're building physical prowess, you're building, you know, these physiological and psychological adaptations every single day, right? You're becoming a bigger, better beast than the you that you were a week ago, a month ago, a year ago. So for me, you know, this is what I love about this. This is what I love about this sport. It is challenging unlike anything else. It is you know, breaking barriers for limiting beliefs, you, you're smashing ceilings on the regular, you are having to confront every little inner critic that you have, because it's always you versus you. But when you're in a situation where, you know, you're not capable of looking at a failure, and to me, like, and this might sound harsh, but it, it's kind of true, anything other than a first place is, you know, your viewpoint for how you can improve to chase the first, right? So if, however, there is nothing definitively clear, then how do you take that opportunity for growth from the, the failing to find first to be able to come back and get a first? Because it's so subjective and so lines that are constantly moving that there is no definitive okay well I know no matter what I go away and I work on the lower quadrant of my glute I bring up my glute hamstring tie-in I come in with you know specifically more chunky abs I build a little bit more in my symmetry or I'm you know need to grow disproportionately the lower half like whatever it is if you go away and you work on what should be the thing then come back and still failed to see any improvements in ranking, even though you probably technically should, how long are you going to keep doing that for before you go, fuck this shit? You know what I mean? And you lose your passion for it. Most people people have. most. You lose your passion for it, but you also lose your self-confidence and you start losing your your direction. You start losing, you start doubting. Value, yes. Capability and capacity, (laughs) right? And to me, that's the shit that sucks, right? It should be... No matter what, even if there's someone like I improve and someone comes in that's just better than me, I can I can take that. I'm good with that. that. Yes. Okay, (laughs) then I'm lost because of XYZ and it's cool. I hate it because I know I work so hard to improve. But you know what? I'm just back to the drawing board. I'm back to the game. I'm back to the improvement. I'm back to the hustle. Like it's a different level of um of processing and acknowledgement for the reasons why you're not quite there yet. Do you know what I mean? Like Oh, hundred percent. So I, I think about that as an athlete, as my own self yes. athlete, but I also think about that because they're the conversations I have with my athletes as a coach. And it's really hard to break through those moments where you know it shouldn't have rolled how it rolled, but you can't I, I was gonna say that next. I'm like, it's so hard. I don't think about it. Anything. You know, you just like forgive oh, feedback. Like, I you can't just don't understand even with your own eyes and you're like, wait, what? Yeah. I, I, I'm, so it's really I'm difficult. Lost. It, it, it is really difficult. And these, I agree you know, with you. Yeah. These again are the same things that happen. And there's a reason that um, because we're giving people a benchmark for the things they need to, you know, achieve in order to be at the top of a specific sport field category criteria, whatever it is across the board in any sporting event, you have markers for success, you have metrics for success, and you have clearly defined targets you got to hit, whether it's a time, whether it's a jump, whether it's a height, whether it's a speed, whether it's a physique, or, you know, body fat percentage, whether it's no matter what it is, you've got it, right? And as long as you keep that laser focus and that narrow tunnel vision on that goal and that end game and everything you do today, tomorrow, every day leading up to the event itself is targeted towards that, then success is inevitably guaranteed. And at some point you're going to take the win. You're going to get that improvement. 
um, takes time, but you know that the strategy and the protocols you're right. following through with are going to get you there. And I agree with you on, on so many levels there about the physique and, you know, just the criteria in general of what to expect and um, what each sport brings. Cause this is across the board for I'm so saying, many, sports, every all sport. sports, like as an athlete, like you want to have things broken down, like, Oh my God. I mean, especially anybody that's listening, it's been in prep, you know, if you don't have a checklist and you don't have things that you can refer back to, you are just lost. <laughs> like you're just like, I don't I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know where I'm like supposed to be today, go or what. So it's very important to also have these small things written down for us to always refer back to. And it's very difficult, you know, not just as a coach, but as an athlete to get motivated, even in the gym, if you don't even know what you're striving for, or if you physically not gaining, you know, some strides, um, making improvements and, you know, obviously having the aesthetic goals to work along the way. Cause I mean, I'm sure most of our listeners here are having some aesthetic goals and have, you know, some want to change their, you know, physique and add some more lean muscle tissue. And with all of that, you know, having a, a stage, you know, a show in mind, you kind of want to know where you stand and then how you can improve and it's very difficult to have that as a as like let's say a sport in a competition um you know if you don't have those things very you know obviously just given to you broken down with yeah. exactly how you need to be showing up um not just guessing and wondering oh i need to you know, hire this or do that and, you know, go through this loophole and make it impossible sometimes to do things. Um, you know, I just have to throw more money at it, right? Like um, right. If, I'm, if I'm making these physical improvements, but I'm not actually getting there, well, then clearly I need to go and have two bikinis and two theme wears and you know what I mean? Like, no, you are saying you're trying to figure it out, trying to go through each loophole, trying to like, how do I do this? And like, try to, you know, just do all the things versus, you know, you just really need rather, rather than just nailing and honing in on the actual core criteria that's required. Right. Yes. And so, you know, look, when we think about this and we think about the consequences, you know, as we've just touched on, for me, the consequences are so much more far reaching in the space of, you know, losing passion, losing direction, losing self-confidence, losing you know, um, that little voice in your head that says, hey, you know what, um, defeat of any kind is healthy because it's driving me forward and improving me. It becomes, well, I'm just never good enough. I'm not ever going to be good enough. I'm just not the favorite and I'm just not in favor and I'm just not. And it's a totally different dialogue. And that's the stuff I find the most damaging is that when, you know, someone's dialogue and someone's narrative um completely affects yes them as a person and the beautiful power they had once we see it diminish and you know that's the stuff that they burns out and they don't even like be motivated to even want to not just do this again but to just even you know strive for their physicals or their capital, and, and also it, it impacts other things right so we think about this this and this is something you know that I, I really do strongly believe in I think when you when you're in this sport it's not always like it's not it's not never just about the win you know everyone wants to be competitive and get to the point where they feel like they're good enough to win something and that's great but it's never just about that it's the fact that the person you become along this journey is such a profound depth of yourself that makes it such a beautiful thing. It's like, you know, it's literally the butterfly being born all the time, right? And it impacts so many other areas of your life. It, it can make you a better communicator and more tolerant and more, um, you know, resilient in all these other facets of life. And if you have this one area that you've you know, being able to continue to grow and develop and, and create diamonds from pressure out of that starts to crumble. What impact do you think that's going to have on the rest of everything? It's going to have a flow on effect to all avenues of life. I, I truly believe it. And it's probably something I've started to see, you know, firsthand in the last couple of months. Um, and it's something I don't want to see. And it's something I don't want for people. And it's something that, you know, I think um, anyone listening to this, I just really hope that in a situation where they've felt like that or they've been made to question themselves, I want them to actually stop and take a breath and take a moment and, and acknowledge their development and their progress and their improvements and not give that power away for anyone or anything because you shouldn't. You know what I mean? Like you should hold fast on the person you've become because regardless of a 
title, a win or not, it's profound change and that should never be lost and that no one should ever have that taken away from them, right? So, you know, when I think about the consequences, I go more to that place um, rather than just, hey, I've been raped of all of my money, which is another thing. But it's, to me, it's so much deeper than like energy, money's energy and I energy feel like you can always get it back at some point later. You shouldn't have to mortgage everything to do something no um but that to me is like not as damaging as what it does to the oh, the internal yeah your internal um like self yeah. and yeah i agree like experience too that's why i keep going back to the experience because yeah, the, the amount i mean of hundreds of messages that i that i have of just uh disappointed you know people too their experience and or yeah. whatever you know kind of happened to them and things that i've never even heard of and then, you know, situations and scenarios of just so many manipulative cases and all of that and just started making me think, man, like the the corruption that we have internal is because of manipulation and greed and power. Like, like oh. the want for power and like to be, you know, of course, um, someone that tells you what to do, right? And then can manipulate yeah. you and essentially get what they want out of you. And yeah. I think that's where we all have to be extremely careful. Every person from all aspects in life, like yeah. people that try to manipulate you, that try to uh, convince you to do things or try to tell you this is the only way things can be done, you know, yeah, you or this is the only way, yeah, like this is the well, only way through possibly right? have or you won't, yeah, yeah. you've got to do this to do, to get that. And like that is just a tactic of manipulation that I mean, obviously the oldest one in the book of like, you know, do this for me and I give you that, but it's just, it's not, I mean, morals, number one, number two, you're better than that. Number three, you're actually someone that you probably already ran away from feeling that way. If you are maybe listening, you did one of the shows and you're like, you know what, I'm out. <laughs> I totally felt all those vibes and can't do this and you might have been someone that was maybe not ever involved with any of that you never felt any of that you just had a good time it could I mean honestly it's kind of feel like I'm talking about myself at the beginning like I had no clue anything was well, that, was, that was 100% me like like I never had anything but a great time I never had you know um shitty but then, experiences but different though, Ali, because people point in time until yeah people and were then different then I, I feel like them. people were really different then I feel right. like the the yeah. old, old, yeah. you know, generation. So you of, can of see when we're different. talking about consequences, you can see the change. You can see the the, you can see the turning of the tide. You can see where, um, you know, stuff shifted, and you feel it. You feel it in yourself and in your own personal experiences. You you feel it through the experiences of but others. Yeah, if it doesn't um, feel right, guys. I mean, you just know if you feel it in your gut. You just know something is not sitting right. Just go with your gut. Like your gut's most likely right. And yes, like, I think that's where if we do maybe not lead just with emotion again, I, I really very, very yeah. Yeah. believer. Like you've got to still be very level headed, um, but yeah. you've got to listen to your gut. You've got to listen to those yeah. feelings and you've got to listen to, hmm, was that toxic or was that, you know, them trying to use me or was that them trying to make me do something or was that, you know, manipulation? Like, like, don't get me wrong. I think that in, you know, every sport and every team and every environment and every culture, there's the cultural norms and there's certainly, you know, the conduct and the presentation regulations for branding that is all important. Um, and I believe that, you know, one should 100% represent that. But then I think, you know, anything beyond that that is just I don't know ludicrous I I don't think should be asked of people do you know what I mean like and I think um I think anywhere where you feel pressure to be above and beyond something that is the basic requirements for something that's probably a sign and that's probably yes. a thing you know and like for me personally I think about um over the years where I haven't been able to represent socially everything that my business does because I haven't been able to because it's been in conflict. But realistically, 
that shouldn't exist and that shouldn't be a problem. And I should be able to highlight all the endeavors from my many athletes that are, you know, Mm. taking all over, over, participating in many things. Right. And I should never have had to isolate myself to any one thing. And I will never do that again. That has been my biggest lesson. We've had many discussions about this inside of my team. And I'm like, never again, never again for anything, for anyone. Will I ever downplay what I do? Because what I do is so much more expansive than one tiny vehicle. Um, So we won't do that. And that will never be a thing for me again. But that's probably also like another indicator. It's a big lesson. I think for everyone here that's still here listening this far and that's still interested in what we're saying here is, you know, we we really are learning through all this. We are not trying to, you know, uh, blame or say we are giving our thoughts, our experiences, and we're just, you know, putting out, of course, um, what we've seen. I mean, we've, we've seen how manipulation and politics can destroy um, the integrity of a sport, like we've witnessed it firsthand. So it's just something that we 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 just you know of course are um, very passionate well, of. You know what I think it gives us. We do. You know what I think it gives us though. It gives us um, perspective and reflection points where you can actually make improvements inside of not only your own vehicle and your own business structure, but improvements in the industry or the sport you're in as a whole moving forward by refusing to participate in anything that is limiting, confining, ceiling-based, anything that is not completely rock solid, um, completely set in stone, completely clear, completely transparent. You know that you are guiding people in a way where you're giving them the skills and the resources to 100% be successful, but where it is in no way stretch your imagination, putting someone in a position to do something that, you know, isn't part of the actual unbiased set of criteria. Do you know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. Like, and, you I, know, for me, I think that's what it gives you. Can, can we say the, the biggest enlightening part? And I think this is besides the fact that we're more than a title, we bring so much more to the table than just, you know, ourselves to, you know, the shows and the team and everything of that. And, you know, ambassadors for the brand. It was none of that. Like it, it was none of that for us. And I know it was not because we've had these combos of we have much more for what we stand for, and what we want, you know, for our ourselves and for our, you know, our company, our team, and just, it's just not, not aligning, but it's really the fact of a safe environment. And I think that was my breaking point. Like uh, my breaking point was the fact that, I mean, not only did I personally know Rich Henderson, but I actually um, had a, a really, really close just relationship with the individual where we were even going to be doing, you know, stuff with his, um, nonprofit organization that he had and it was just what I we just know him on a personal level where yeah. it, it was more of an aha moment that could have been any of my clients could have been myself could have been you Allie yeah. been any person and it doesn't matter who they are it's a human being and that again is because of the safety of not have it's irresponsibility number one um, but number two is just yeah. the, it's just the, yeah. just the the mind, I mean, for me, it's just the heart and like the ability to be inhumane. That is just really where the, the safety is, is above all. And that was my boiling point. That was my breaking point. And that was when really um, all of this kind of uh, had to be left in my past. And I just had to move forward. And I know that this is why um, it hurts, right? I mean, it's it's for those that are just it's still cool. maybe- I don't, I don't know about maybe, you, but it is it is like- when you've been in something for so long and when you've been um, for something, like really for something, for, for even, yeah. if, even if it was for what it once was, it's for something to the point that, you know, that you have been, it, there's a massive internal conflict, you know, and I would say if you're not experiencing that, then that's probably a bigger question mark, but um you know, it it is, and it's not something you choose lightly and it's not something that is done easily. And it is not something that is done without a lot of thought um, and good reason for it. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't, and that's why the minute that you made your announcement, 
and chose your direction. I'm in full support always of everything that you choose to do, always will be. You know, you're one of my ride or dies and one of my number ones, and I would always be behind you. Um, and no one could ever say a bad word about you, whether you're walking a straight line or a very crooked one, I would still support your journey, right? Um, and to me, there is no chance that someone like you makes that decision lightly. So I honestly know that it's not something that's easy to do. And I honestly know that it's something that, you know, took a pretty big move for you to do. Um, and I think for a lot of people, you know, it's not always an option to do things maybe the same way that you did it, but that doesn't mean that things aren't being done, you know, like, and I think. I understand. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's and I, for everybody. And I know everyone's standpoint is different. Everyone that maybe wasn't present or that wasn't there or was there. Um, everyone has their own point of view. Everyone is, has the right to their own opinion. And I think that the biggest um, thing is, me wanting to be safe and me wanting to take care of my team and really having, yeah. um, you know, alignment with the brand that, like you said, we've been aligned with so long and we, and that's why it was painful. And, um, but yeah. beyond that, it's, it's more on a brighter future, just knowing that yeah, 100%. things happen for a reason. And I, yeah. I still don't know what this lesson is. I still don't know what, what's to come. I don't really have all the answers but what though, I do know there's a bigger and better future. I do you know, know what though. I do think it gives you the opportunity to, which is, you know, similar to my own situation in the sense where you actually now show the diversity and scope to what your practice is. It's not just one pony, you know, a one pony show. It's not just one dimension. And I think this is awesome for, for you. And I know it's been, so freeing for me to just be able to go well yeah and for the last year we've been prepping and we've been preparing yeah. all these different events and all these different things because people were literally jumping into these big things that they were doing but I had just never showcased any of it so it's really cool now for me to be able to show my entire team that same level of promotion and support publicly even though they get so much of it you know um where where, where it matters most which is in the individual one-to-one -one, um right. you know and exactly. inside our, our inside our community but it's now cool to be able to go hey you know fuck yeah go you um, you yeah uh, yeah <laughs> all the other areas and you know that's just a really beautiful thing so i think i think they're the learnings for us for yeah and i think that's the learnings for both of us is going hey I no longer need the world to believe this is all I am because there's actually so many other areas. Exactly. That's, that's where I feel I've been really stepping into. Um, I've, I've really had a big challenge the last couple months with um, I guess showing up because I've had a lot of emotional days and it's just kind of like, well, then I get triggered and it's like, Oh, that I hear or see or freaking oh, told something and I just get into that, that bad mood again. And I'm like, yeah, I've got to step away. I got to, you know, um, get myself away from what's causing that extra stress. And that's, that's the reason why I've actually kind of uh, been a little bit more um, silent specifically for those yeah. reasons, but you well, guys do have time. You've done more. And, oh, that's all I, that's all I've been doing though. Like, so okay. y'all know my update. I didn't really get kind of give y'all. Um, I've been spending a lot of family time. So been actually spending time with uh, some of Carrie's family, went up to Montana, did lots of hikes, um, spent some time with my family here in Texas. We actually went down to the hill country. Um, we spent some time there in, in central Texas and uh, came back up and I'm actually like getting my mom ready to go back to El Salvador. Uh, my dad is currently there. So I've got to uh, really, really make sure I get as much time as possible possible with my mother um still trying to you know prioritize who matters most in my life and yeah. um the people that you know I want to spend my time with and it's and you know unfortunately not social media <laughs> I, just, I was just gonna say to you I don't know about you but what I also take away from all of this is and I look I often talk about this with my team anyway is you better have something more than just this you know just this journey just this one moment just this one stage is one event what actually is the bigger whys in your life because without them when something does go sideways or wrong 
you're defined by something that shouldn't be the the primary event in your life, right? It should be an element, a progress point, a development zone. It should be, you know, a, a challenge or an accomplishment, but it shouldn't be your everything. And, you know, what I've noticed most is, when you have this profound level of connection to something so much more in your life, you don't get as completely perturbed and affected and derailed by a situation like what we've all gone through, you know, like, or at least it gives a perspective. I'll be really honest, my family and having George and having Christos and having, you know, the little lady coming, man, it just makes me every day go, who the fuck cares do you know what I mean like on the scale of it who the fuck cares because these humans and these things that matter the absolute world to me and my really good friends they're pinnacle they're the number one that's what comes first above everything else and it just makes me go who cares who cares about a crown who cares about a title who cares about any of that crap honestly if you if you get it great and it and it's well earned and well deserved and you know you've worked hard to get it and it's definitely something that I will make an aim for again at some point in the future but I'm no longer driven by entirely that I could take it or leave it I am 100% grounded by something so much more and you know everything else that I achieve in life is just a beautiful accomplishment but it is not the fiber and the only fiber in me, you know? And I think that's probably another big take home, another big lesson. And I, I know you felt that and I know you, it's given you time to connect back in and go far out for the sake of this over here, which hasn't really served me. I haven't been serving the ones I've loved as much as I could be. And so it's really nice to go, I'm giving my love and I'm giving my energy and I'm, I'm remembering what's important in my life and I'm focusing there and filling my cup up properly So that then when all the other good stuff starts to flow, which it will, and it's coming in the other direction of life, I'm going to be so full. I'm overflowing. You know what I mean? It's such a different space. to sit in, And that's probably how I've been feeling and sitting for about six, eight weeks now. Yeah. I think that's, you couldn't have said it better. Like everything about um, what really matters, you know, having your why and actually truly knowing there's more to you than some of these you know, phases or uh, accomplishments that you have already achieved. And um, do I still feel like there's more in me? Yes, I absolutely do. And that was another battle and struggle I was having. It's like, well, oh my God, like I I wasn't done competing and I'm, I'm now, I'm very torn. And and guys, I'm not going to disclose much further. I just want everybody to know I am going to step on stage. Just, (laughs) just stay tuned and just keep you know maybe listening to the podcast uh, once I start posting you guys can start following my posting <laughs> which algorithms are right now are gonna hate me because I haven't been posting um but but just fine it's it's no big deal we'll get that thing going and getting my you know the engagement back up again. <laughs> but once I obviously get you know things rolling you guys will definitely start understanding what I'm going to be doing but I will be stepping on stage you just have to stay a little more tuned because I'm not done I'll keep you know this body machine in working as much as I possibly can I'm working through my injuries this year has still been a very very big um journey of you know just overcoming injuries learning how to train again um you know doing what I can and uh so yeah this is just going to finish off the year with you know that and making sure I have a good foundation to re go back into uh make sure that you know I can I can step on that stage again so uh you guys stay tuned for you definitely I have no doubt about it and I think you know look it's going to be a completely different vibe for you when you do too oh man (laughs) And I don't know about you, but like when you do get on stage and you win something, you want to know you won because you were like the fucking best on stage. There's no contesting it. There is no question mark around even potential. None of that. No, none of that. Or um, positioning and square. or anything. It's got to be no one actually beat me end of story do you know what I mean so I'm I'm super excited for you and I think you won't have any of those you know niggling background chatter about whether or not that even is a potential thought for people because it'll be irrefutable when you do it next right 
Um, oh, well, you get so, to just keep watching. <laughs> so, so we look. We hope you did enjoy the fact that we're, you know, coming back with a new flavor that we're, you know, relaunching and re-energizing what we bring and how we bring it, that there's really going to be no dimension at all off the table for us. There's nothing we can or cannot broach, which is a really liberating feeling. Um, You know, we'll be sharing a lot. Very much so. We we don't have to hold back now, Ali. We can just like let it loose. We can like (laughs) let it all out. (laughs) I mean, look, I love it. We'll, we'll probably be able to do that even more so in the future, um, you know, which will be exciting. But, you know, at this point, it's just we just wanted to raise a little bit of awareness that if you're feeling certain things and if it looks a certain way, then maybe it's time to question something for yourself um, and just tap back into. And I think the biggest story is to have a connection point and a why that is about a lot more than just one event, one process, one journey, you know, don't don't limit your life or yourself to that because it really should be about so much more so that, you know, it doesn't completely derail everything about you. If what this one thing comes off the table, you know, Um, I, I definitely think, You shouldn't be boxed. You shouldn't be confined. There should never be a ceiling and you shouldn't be um, in a position where you don't have that bigger, bigger thing. Yeah, you should always be striving for growth, you know, making sure that you're in the right environment, that you feel supported, that you actually have the right tools, right? All these things have to be met. And if you feel like you're just not having them and you're just not in the right position uh, or in the right environment or in the right, you know, uh, let's say yeah. support system, then you, you've you got some things to maybe reconsider yeah. and you know, evaluate and just uh, dissect a little further and listen to that gut feeling. If you know something is up, you know, something's wrong, whether if that be, you know, within your protocols, within your organization, your own sport, this could be applying for so many things, your own circle of family and friends. Like there's just so many things that we do have to cut out. We've talked about that. You guys can always refer back to, you know, the, there's a uh, toxic relationships and all those things that we got to cut out of our lives that we have uh, in a previous episode. But, you know, we really are excited to be back. We're happy happy to uh give you guys a little quick update not really quick as much as a uh, little little dragged out here but now you guys know what's up with us <laughs> and now you guys know what's going on and we will be back on regular recordings and getting you guys back yeah. some good educational information so if there's any topics that you guys are wanting to listen more of or maybe just curious get some questions i'm actually going to be doing a uh like a little q a so you guys can give us a little bit of insight since we have been away a little bit um <laughs> to see what you guys are, are wanting on this yeah. this uh, new little go around that we've got going on and um yeah. thank you guys for listening and ali it's so good to see you Always good to see you, babe. And uh, one last final little for everyone is I actually get to see this uh, gorgeous face in person soon. She's coming down under for my baby shower. the The surprise is out okay guys the surprise is out i am actually coming to australia so all my aussie listeners here that um (laughs) are gonna be be seeing her come out to the gold coast show i uh will be seeing you guys in person too i'm so excited to see you uh, you, Ali, as well. And um, now the secret's out. <laughs> I'm coming to Australia, baby. So <laughs> I look forward I to it. I can't wait to see you. to see a kangaroo. I'm looking that. forward to that. <laughs> I am. I'm not kidding. You'll definitely see koalas at the moment around my joint. They're everywhere. So, which is pretty Love cool. It. But Ruse, you would definitely see if you were coming down to Canberra, but we're not going that far this trip. But uh, but I just can't wait. I can't wait to see you. Can't wait to give you a big hug. It's gonna be so nice to catch up post all of the uh, you know, drama and just to spend some quality time. This is what yeah. it's about. Yeah. This is the stuff, this is the, the friendships, this is the, the family stuff. that you build that matter the most about this kind of journey. So, you know, as I talked about with your bigger why, it's it's this shit. It's yeah, this is, this, is exactly what this, is, this is why we are doing what we do is because of the community, the 
actual friendships, the family we've created. Um, and I love you, Alvi. Thank you. I love you guys. Wait, babe. I'm so excited to be able to see you guys soon. And anyone listening, if you are in Australia, I mean, my Are oh, you going to see her? Should we have a show? Yeah, you're going to see me if you come on. <laughs> I look forward to it. Thank you, everyone, once again. Right, guys. Lots of love. Take, Take care. care. See you next time.